Hello once again in the first video coming to you from the new apartment. And this is also the first video being shot on my new phone, my Samsung Galaxy S10. And I'm coming to you today from the living room because uh, a little insider secret, I'm actually taping this video before I even tape the apartment tour video. Just because I kind of want to check out what's in front of you here and uh, and sort of get that out of the way right away. I was in the city the other day and I went to the restore and I found this guy for 15 bucks. Oh wait, hold on. I wonder if this will work. Oh, that's awesome. Wow, holy cow. Um, this is a cheap kind of flimsy fluorescent shop light fixture. Uh, it takes two F40 T12 bulbs and uh, this is one of those fixtures that you could buy for like 20 bucks in the 90s and 2000s. Um, if you've ever seen one of the fixtures made by Lights of America, uh, this is basically one of those. This one I don't think is made by Lights of America. It doesn't have any of the branding uh, on the label, but it's basically the same thing. Um, so I, I bought this, um, because I have high hopes that I can use it in the office room because it's a rather cheap and, and lightly built fixture. It's very light. And it also came with these hanging chains you see here. So I should be able to hang this from the uh, drop ceiling, of course, my drop ceiling that I've got in here. Um, I should be able to safely hang this from the drop ceiling and use it to light up uh, a work area in the office room. And uh, uh, that excites me quite a bit, the thought of being able to have a lot of light from this thing lighting that place up. So I haven't tested this yet. We're going to do that today. And uh, it should be interesting because um, this being the kind of fixture it is, it might have, it's so light that I don't think it has a standard magnetic ballast in it. But what fixtures like this have is a very strange ballast that you only ever saw in fixtures like this. It is a magnetic ballast, but it's not an auto transformer. It's not a transformer that actually steps up the, the voltage and, and stuff like that. What these Lights of America style fixtures have is basically a choke ballast that's been paired with basically a capacitive voltage multiplier to brute force through capacitive through through capacitive inductance resonance basically brute force create the high voltage needed to run uh, these fluorescent lamps it's incredibly crude um, they're generally low quality, they're inefficient, um, they're not durable. Um, if a lamp begins to fail, it'll cook those ballasts pretty quickly. And uh, you can always tell if one of these cheap shop light fixtures has that kind of ballast because when you turn it on, it makes a very loud buzzing noise for just a split second until the bulbs uh, start. If that's what this has in it, which I assume it must because it doesn't have, uh, it, it, it definitely doesn't feel heavy enough to have an ordinary, you know, like rapid start ballast in it from a reputable, you know, manufacturer. I'm assuming it's one of those. So this came with the bulbs you see in it. They appear to be Philips Alto fluorescent lamps. These are okay lamps. They're, they're generally good quality. Unfortunately, sometimes you see these prematurely fail due to mercury starvation. These are low mercury uh, lamps. That was sort of their thing, especially back when they first came out. You can identify them with the green end caps. They look definitely some degree of warm, um, hopefully. Uh, hopefully the bulbs are actually still good because I don't have anything, uh, I don't have any other lamps here to test this with. Uh, I have a, a few in my possession, but they are at mum's house right now. Um, but that's what this has in it. I assume they're 40, or I assume they're 34 watt lamps. Uh, I can't imagine somebody buying this and then 
putting proper 40 watt lamps in it. Let's see if I can get one out with, no, they're 40 watt lamps. Oh, my cup runneth over. So we have, I'm reading this upside down, F40 T12, Cool White Supreme. Oh my goodness. Very nice. Made in the USA. And uh, I forget how Phillips date codes work. That might be a date code of 2005. So very cool. All right. Let's flip this over. It does have a label on the bottom. Canarm 157644. 120 volts, 60 hertz. What the heck? Oh, well, this is very strange. It specifies either 40 watt bulbs or 32 watt bulbs. Did they mean, did they mean 34 watts? Or are they actually talking F32 T8 bulbs? Oh, it just occurred to me, and I don't know why I didn't think of this before. This must have an electronic ballast in it. I don't know why I didn't even consider that. I figured if it wasn't a conventional magnetic ballast that it must be one of those cheap Lights of America style resonance ballasts. I didn't even consider that. So if that's what they're saying, that this can take both types of lamp, then it must be an electronic ballast. That's the only type of ballast that could run both an F40 T12 or an F32 T8. Okay, well, we'll find out anyway. We will open this thing up and see what's what it's got for ballast in it. And what I'm hoping to do is I do have a proper magnetic rapid start ballast that we will put in here today. Manufacture date 1-3-2005. Okay, so these bulbs might be the original. I can't imagine, though, uh, a cheap fixture like this coming with proper Phillips alto lamps but maybe it's true maybe these are the original lamps and it's got a hardwired plug on it and as you can see it's not even you know this fixture is not built like a a normal proper fixture where it would have you know the standard size opening where you'd buy a a, a grommet or a or a cord clamp or whatever to install a cord this this is basically just an appliance cord coming right in its own sized hole. Likewise, there's no cutouts in this for anything like a starter socket or anything like that. This was a purpose-built fixture. It was built to have just, you know, whatever, presume, I'm assuming now electronic ballast that it came with, um, and nothing more. And if that ballast went bad, they probably expected you to just throw away the whole fixture. Um, so yeah, that's what we've got. Who made the sockets? Yu Cheng. Okay, no uh, no General Electric sockets here. Well, all right, that's what we're dealing with. Um, let me plug this thing into an outlet behind me. I've got a switched switched outlet we can use, and uh, we'll power this thing on. See if it works. Okay, I'm plugged in. Let's turn it on and uh, hope it doesn't explode. Oh dear. Okay, I would say we have had bulbs go bad. Well, that's a shame. Either that or the ballast is shot. Yeah, it's not making happy sounds either. All right. Well, it doesn't really matter whether the ballast works or not because uh, it's going to come out of there. But uh, I'm guessing we have at least one bulb that is at the end of its life. But uh, that's okay because I have spares. I'll just have to grab them from uh, from Mum's house. Um, let's take the bulbs out and... Uh, see how to open this thing up. We'll see what it's got for a ballast inside it. Bulbs removed. We've got another sticker on here that suggests you can use both T12 or T8 lamps. So what I'm guessing is we'll find an electronic ballast that's rated for both. And uh, hopefully it is a standard size, uh, you know, brick shaped ballast because that means we can shove any ballast we want in here. 
But let's find out. I'm guessing we take out this screw here and this screw here. Well, here's what we're greeted with. Indeed, a standard sized electronic ballast. And uh, one of the chintziest electronic ballasts I've ever seen. Um, the brand name is Star 028, <laughs> which almost sounds like it was like the filing number that the government gave the company when it was incorporated <laughs> rather than an actual brand name. Uh, and it says uh, 120 volts, 60 hertz, Runston start. <laughs> yeah, this thing is, um, it's the epitome of quality, to be honest. It's, it's solid. Um, Date code is 132005, exact same as the uh, as the fixture itself. So what that tells me is that the company who built the fixture is the same company who made the ballast. Unless they put they just wanted to put the same date on the fixture as the ballast, who knows? And interestingly, it's rated for a worryingly large range of lamps. We've got 40 watt T12. It also specifies the energy saving 34 watt T12. That's great. 32 watt T8. But we've also got F25 T8s, which are the three foot long T8 lamps. And F17 T8s, which are the two foot long T8 lamps. And then it also specifies F20 T12 lamps. So, and uh, the, you can see the line current decreases with uh, each lamp uh, as as you, as the lamps get shorter so that tells me that this behaves like a high power factor ballast which most electronic ballasts do in that it keeps the uh, current going through the lamp pretty constant regardless of the length of lamp and that's good good for the lamp good for the ballast um, and then the last one here that I haven't mentioned yet it specifies 25 watt t12 lamps now that's an interesting one. Um, there is an actual size of fluorescent lamp called an F25 T12. I own one. It's one of the so-called appliance lamps. Um, it's a lamp that's about two and a half feet long. And um, where it's an appliance lamp, it's got Krypton uh, in, the, in the gas fill which lowers the arc voltage, so you can actually run it on a choke ballast on 120 volts. Um, but this probably isn't referring to that type of lamp. What this is actually referring to is a special kind of F40 T12 um, that is basically designed with really crappy uh, light-duty cathodes, and as such, it can only handle way less current than a normal F40 T12. I don't know if bulbs like that are still being made. I They're probably not anymore. But uh, they were basically called shop light bulbs. And they were basically meant to run on so-called shop light ballasts. For some reason, in the world of F40 T12 lamps, there was just a complete class of fixture and lamp that was the same size, you know, same four foot bulb but only designed to handle 25 watts of power and as such um, the ballasts themselves are super weak and they only push you know at most 25 watts through the lamp and uh, if you run a regular F40 T12 on them um, they only run at 25 watts just the same it's a rapid start ballast so it's fine no harm done to the lamp but they're just very dim um, they're comically dim the so-called shop light ballasts, and they were meant to be paired with these shop light, so-called shop light bulbs. Advance made a ballast called the, it originally had a brand name, it was called the Home Bright Ballast, um, but later they just gave it a normal model designation. It is the HB234TP, um, and it's basically one of those so-called shop light ballasts, um, that runs the bulbs so dimly, um, and they're hilarious ballasts. People hate them. People in the lighting community, if they come across one, they just throw it away. I'm the opposite. I think it's hilarious. I'd love to get one of those ballasts. But anyway, 
that's what we've got in here. Obviously, this is going to come out. I don't even know if I want to remove it so that it'll be preserved in case I want to use it again or if I just want to cut it right at the wire outlets and just toss it. I'm not sure yet. I mean, we don't know yet because I've potentially got bad lamps, but it may be a perfectly fine ballast. Certainly a versatile ballast, but let me show you what I've got to put in its place. And uh, this is going to be a problem, I'll explain why in a minute, but this is something out of my stash. It is a General Electric bonus line ballast, made in 1978. I've had this for seven years or so. I got it back in university, I found it in a pile of electrical junk sitting in a building that was going to be scrapped or whatever. Uh, this and a couple other ballasts, and uh, I took them home. Whether that was orthodox or not at the time is uh, dubious, but it was a long time ago, so I guess it doesn't really matter anymore. But yeah, I picked this up. It worked fine when I uh, uh, tested it back in 2015. It's a high power factor, rapid start ballast. It specifies 40 watt or 35 watt lamps. The original energy saving 40 watt lamps were 35 watts. Of course, today they're 34 watts. Um, I have read that these really, really do not like running energy saver lamps. Uh, it causes them to get very hot uh, to the point where they start leaking tar. Uh, this one has leaked a little bit of tar out of it, I can see. But luckily it is a PCB-free ballast, so no, no health danger. But yeah, that's what we've got here. Um, but the issue is... This ballast is actually larger than this one. If I had, if I had a, a you know, a, a lower class, low power factor ballast like the Advance Homebright ballast I spoke about a few minutes ago, that would drop right in place here. But these high power factor ballasts are a little bit longer, and uh, I'm gonna have to, I guess, just drill another hole. Should be simple enough. Drill another hole. And uh, then this guy will drop in. Now, of course, uh, one thing is that it'll make the fixture a little bit heavier. So whether or not it'll allow me to hang it from the drop ceiling where I want to hang it remains to be seen. But we'll find out. We'll play it by ear. But uh, yeah, that's what we've got going on here. The wires were cropped short when it was removed from service, but I'll be able to just solder extensions onto them and that'll be fine. So, I guess let's get this ballast out of here and I'll drill a hole and we'll drop this guy in. I figure while I'm waiting for my drill battery to charge, we may as well find out uh, which of those two bulbs is bad or if both of them are bad. And to do that, we're bringing back the full ham workhorse too. Uh, my instant start lamp killer ballast. These are genuinely good quality ballasts as far as electronic instant start ballasts go. They're probably the best. Um, but these are also very well known in the lighting community for being very durable and very willing to uh, run a lamp into the ground until it basically goes open circuit. Um, these are very durable indeed. And uh, that's exclusively what I use this for. I've had it for years and all I've ever used it for is to kill dying fluorescent lamps. And it puts on quite a show while it does it. It's fun to watch. And uh, it's certainly a good way of telling whether or not a bulb is still good. If it is still good, this will just light it up as normal. And uh, it'll light up pretty much anything properly from a 4 watt T5 to a 40 watt T12. Um, so I've got it haphazardly wired in here. I've just got one set of sockets set up. And uh, we'll put these bulbs in one at a time and uh, we'll see what they do. Alright, bulb the first. Contact. And it appears to be perfectly fine. Okay, cool. Well, that's only half the number of bulbs I need to get then. Nice. I'll let this run for a few minutes just to confirm, but it looks like this bulb's perfectly fine. Okay, bulb the second. This one's got the darker ends, so I'm guessing this one's bad, but let's find out. 
Uh, it lit up. It wasn't happy for a split second, but it seems okay. Let's power cycle it again. Oh, it seems seems okay. It was a little angry for a split second, but uh, now it seems okay. So it's quite possible that these two bulbs together may light up just fine on uh, this magnetic ballast I'm going to be putting in. All right, I think I got this thing wired up correctly. We'll learn awful quickly if I don't, but uh, let's put some lamps in it and see if it works. All right, contact. And I got nothing. Why not? Okay, I think I had a bad solder connection. Let's try this again. Hey, wow, these bulbs jumped to life on this ballast. Holy cow. Uh, huh. So they were acting bad on that electronic ballast. They're running great here. So what that tells me is that electronic ballast is garbage. Gee, who would have thought? And, uh... It's too bad I kept some of the wire length on it to save it because uh, I had to solder a bunch of wire extensions so that everything could reach. Oh well. Well, what that tells me is we have two good bulbs. They're very bright on this ballast. We've got a good ballast. It's nice and quiet too. And uh, all I gotta do now is uh, drill a hole so I can properly mount the ballast. And uh, we'll be on our way to being ready to install this fixture. Nice color from these bulbs, too. Nice rapid start action on this ballast. And after much more soldering and friggin' around with wiring than I thought I'd be doing today, this thing is all ready to go. Very nice. Now all that's left to do is hang it up. Now, of course, because the ballast is offset to one side, one side is heavier than the other. So I'm going to have to factor that in uh, when figuring out where to hang this up, with how the where the drop ceiling is anchored and stuff like that. Or I'll possibly decide that uh, I really can't safely hang this from the drop ceiling at all. I don't know. We'll We'll find out. And here it is hung up. Uh, hold on, let me shed some light on the situation. Holy smokes, does this thing ever throw a lot of light? Hold on, let me turn this light off. It's the only light on in here. Wow, that's a lot of light. Um, it hangs okay. Um, this side is where the ballast is on, and if I just lift it up here, there's, uh, there's less than a millimeter of flexing from the drop ceiling track. Unfortunately, the drop ceiling in here is laid out in the most unoptimal way uh, <laughs> that, that I uh, could have needed. Uh, anchor points are back here and back here and also uh actually there's no anchor point there there is one right there up by the wall so where i need to hang it is right in the middle of all the anchor points so right at the weakest point convenient um but it's okay it's actually been uh, a few days uh, since the last scene in this video. So it's been hanging for a few days and it seems to be fine other than, you know, that couple of, well, not couple of millimeters, less than a millimeter of movement on this side under the weight of it. It seems to be just fine. However, I am still concerned because, uh, well, <laughs> I don't own this ceiling. Um, and I'm just, you know, I, I want to make sure long term there's no distortion or anything like that so uh, the other thing is that this thing throws off so much light it's great it's it's great work lighting here 
but I almost feel like I could do with a little bit less lighting here. Um, so what I'd really like to get is indeed one of those advanced HB234 TP ballasts. Uh, weaker ballast, not as much light, also a physically smaller ballast, so it's going to be lighter in weight. Problem is, I went on eBay, not a one on eBay. Last one sold in October for $2. Darn it. Um, so yeah, I do have a safe search, but not on eBay at the moment. I went on Lighting Gallery, haven't been there in a while. I, I went on the Wanted forum and put a post out. Somebody got back to me and said, yeah, I have one I'll give to you. So I messaged them, never heard back from them. I messaged them a few days ago. So I don't know if anything will come of that. Magnatech also made sort of a crappy uh, low power factor shop light ballast. It's the model 705 LTCP. Um, none of those on eBay at the moment either. Although that ballast is a little more powerful than the Advance. I'd really like to get the Advance because it's like the most notoriously weak one. <laughs> Just because I, I think I'd love the hilarity of it. So, yeah, I'd like, I think I want to put one of the smaller ballasts in this thing. But I can't get my hands on one at the moment. So I'm going to try something else. Uh, I happen to have Old Faithful with me. Old Faithful is this. My Advance L140 FTP single lamp F40 T12 preheat ballast. This is a very versatile ballast. It handles 40, 34, and 30 watt lamps. It'll also do 32 watt and 40 watt circline lamps. And it also specifies whatever a CFS 28W is. I think it's a type of CFL. It also specifies an F30 T8 which is one of the original fluorescent lamp sizes in the from the 1930s. Um, so yeah, it's a very versatile ballast. It's a smaller, lighter ballast than the one currently in this fixture. It's only single lamp, but it'll do the job of toning down the light output. And it's preheat, and who, who doesn't love preheat? Also a fun little... Uh, Fun little life hack, uh, you can run F32 T8s on this ballast. Uh, it, it powers them perfectly. So that's a little novel. So, yeah, maybe that's what I'll try now. Uh, maybe I'll take this guy back down. Uh, take that ballast back out. Maybe I'll put this guy in, wire it up for one lamp, and uh, we'll see what the light output is like and what the... Uh, what the uh how much weight reduction there is this zip tie is here just to sort of provide a safety harness it's not really bearing any weight maybe a pound at most um just in case you know if one of these drop ceiling hooks fails or the chain snaps or something it won't totally come crashing down if we just go ahead and weigh our big boy ballast here uh three pounds and change And if I weigh the new ballast, uh, just shy of two pounds. So we're shedding an entire pound and a few ounces, which doesn't seem like much. Uh, but considering the entire, what's the entire fixture weigh without the ballast in it? Let's find out. The entire fixture without a ballast in it weighs two pounds. So... Choosing one of these ballasts uh, is quite a change. So, yeah, let's throw this guy in. Of course, it's a preheat ballast. It needs a starter, too. I'll dig out uh, a starter that I've already got wires soldered onto because I don't have a proper starter socket that I can wire in. Although I learned recently that uh, uh, apparently fluorescent lamp starters are... Uh, they have a GU-10 base, and GU-10 is a common base for, like, halogen lights, like recessed lighting and stuff. Um, so while nobody makes fluorescent lamp starter sockets anymore, everybody makes GU-10 halogen lamp sockets. So someday I'll have to buy some of those and see if they actually work for fluorescent lamp starters. Anyway, let's get this guy in. All wired in. Any unterminated wires you see are just for the two sockets that aren't going to be used. Let's put a lamp in this and uh, make sure everything's wired up right. 
contact cool yay all right okie doke let's put this thing back together and hang it back up photosensitivity warning coming in the next few seconds let's see how this looks Ah, that's much more reasonable. Still plenty of light, but not horrifically overbearing. I like that. That's a nice amount of light. And something else I did was I hung it up a little higher. And I did that just by looping the chain around and hooking it up, hooking it into itself. Still got my zip tie safety rope just in case. Yeah, I like that. I like this level of light much better, which makes me all the more uh, hoping that eventually I'll get a hold of one of those advanced HB234 TP ballasts. I guess I'll call on you guys, because I'm coming up empty-handed through other routes. If anybody has one of those ballasts, please get in touch with me if you want to give it a home. I'll pay for shipping, U.S. or Canada. Because, uh, you know, even, even though this is working, you know, just fine, this is a two-lamp fixture, and it looks kind of silly having just one lamp lit up and the other one basically just sitting there for safekeeping. But for now, it works. By the way, they did make two-lamp preheat F40T12 ballast. Um, but I don't know if any were ever made in the smaller ballast size. I think they only came in the larger size, like the uh, GE ballast that we tried in here first. But uh, yeah, this works. This will work here for now, and uh, I think it'll be a nice addition to lighting up this room. You might have noticed I've got my F30 T12 strip light just sitting here. I thought originally... Before I found this fixture, I thought I'd put this up there. Of course, no place to uh, hang it up. I could loop zip ties through it, I suppose. I don't know how well zip ties work long term, though. I suppose if I doubled them up, that would be enough of a safety net. I might still hang this up. I might put it on this side, perhaps. Or perhaps in the little closet space. We'll see. Once I get this room built out the way I want it a little bit more. We'll see what happens, because I'm thinking I might want to put another table along here. Not sure yet. And then if anybody remembers my F40 T12 strip light and they're wondering where that is and why I haven't mentioned that at all, is because I actually donated it to the TV station. Um, the plan is to install it on the set and, uh, and use it to light up uh, part of the set. Uh, so we haven't done that yet, but that's the plan. So I put a, I put a magnetic rapid start ballast in that and, uh, gave that to the station. So that's where that is right now. But there you go. Uh, I would say this shop light is a, is a success. Bought it for 15 bucks at the restore. Changed out the junk electronic ballast in it for a magnetic ballast. A uh, little bit of a weird setup right now with just the one bulb working. But uh, it's doing the job, which is lighting up this uh, table. And uh, I think it's a good amount of light. And uh, yeah, I'm liking this very much. So there you go. Thank you very much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed. A little bit of a little lighting tangent. I haven't done one of those in a while. And... Uh, I'll see you in the videos to come. Thirteen deer in the yards right now. Most I've ever seen. Ooh. 
including one buck. Thirteen of them.